Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and I'm going prime time. What I mean by prime time is I'm going to build a three string cigar box guitar based solely on the prime numbers. Two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. Those are gonna be the fret spacings. And of course I will use a 23 inch scale neck. So this is gonna be a fun experiment. Right here is the 23-inch uh, scale, and you can see here I have the, uh, the nut, which is the zero, the two, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Now I opted for the 12th fret, just because that is a, um, the octave, which is a multiple of basically the uh, open string. Then the 13th. 17th, 19th, and 23rd fret. You can see that there. All right, so let's get to work. Can you hear the rain? Anyhow, so I carved me out a nice Doug fur neck, straight as an arrow. And I'm ready to glue this prime time fretboard right on the top there. All right, we have the prime number fretboard glued onto this neck. Now it's just time to wait. All right, so this box has been painted black, but the inside is still normal wood. The problem I find is when I close this box, I can still see the line right here of the reveal, which is white, or you can sit, see the contrast because it's a black box, right? So what I do is I get my magic marker and just open it up and just go along the edge of the lip here. On both the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to do a little bit here to show you. And it causes that line to disappear. So this is without the, um, the magic marker, right? And that's with it right here. So you can see right here that's kind of just more hidden, you know, that's all. Makes for a sleeker, sleeker look. Also, these magic markers are good for hiding these countersunk holes. Right, because the walls were so thick, I had to use the uh, Fosner bit and then plus this thing is rounded, right? So that would be really hard. So not only is it rounded, but it's super thick. Um, and then also is the, uh, the this cutout here. So the Sharpie you can use for the edges, for an anything that you want to disguise. These little Sharpies are perfect, especially on these black boxes. So, I went ahead and varnished the neck so to match the varnish on the box. And I'm just about ready to button this thing up. Now, here's some interesting things here. So, see how this is all curved in here? You can really see it here on the back. So, this is a cross section of the wood here. It's nice and curved right here. So, um, if you look here, I'm pushing this thing down. It keeps popping up just a little bit, right? So it's just kind of a springy little box. Everything's nice and tight, but I just need to put some screws here on the corner. So if I went straight down, I would miss that wood on the inside. Actually, I would just be screwing into these little inserts here, right? But I want to screw into the meat of this big thick piece here, right? So I'm going to have to angle this drill at an angle right, to get into that um, wood here. And as you can see, right, if you angle it just right, you get it right in the middle of that wood right there. And so that's what I did on all four of these corners, right? I just angled it 
right? So that my screw is gonna come in and then get right into the meat of this big thick piece of wood and make this thing nice and tight. All right, because this top is so thick, I had to search high and low to find these long screws. They're about an inch and a half long and the perfect thickness. So I pre-drilled everything to the exact length I need so that I could get into this, this wood here. And then I countersunk the, um, the hole there and also blackened it in with the, uh, the magic marker. Now here's where you want to be careful. Right? We don't want to split this wood. So you don't want to use your power drills or nothing. You want to use your hand. Now what I do is I squeeze this thing as tight as I can. And then with a hand screwdriver, I'm going to take my time. Now when it starts getting tight, I'm listening for splitting. I don't want that to split. As soon as I hear anything, I'm going to back out. So I'm listening, and I can tell that I'm biting into that wood underneath there. It's a good, good, good bite. Yep, that's good. See right there, I can feel it like snapping in place, right? So, yep, hear that? Okay, so right there, right there is where I want it. Sweet! And then finally, after I carve the saddle and put the fret in place, I make sure that it is of the same high quality color as all the other little spots. Just wouldn't be right if it didn't match. Interesting notes, these prime numbers, I tell you. I'm tuned E, B, E. Now I accidentally just realized that I have an extra fret in here. This is the ninth fret and nine is not a prime number. So I have two, two frets in here that don't belong necessarily, the ninth fret and the 12th fret. All of the others are just the prime numbers. So I have zero, two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, and 23. So I will play just the prime numbers. So technically this would be the prime scale. Sounding, huh? So the nice thing about having the uh, 12th fret is I get the octave right in the middle of the uh, of the guitar, and then I guess the nice thing about having this uh, ninth fret that shouldn't be there is I get access to a major third. Major seven chord. So, kind of cool, kind of some interesting voices. I'm gonna play around with this and have some fun. All right, so these are the prime numbers in the bass notes. You get some really interesting sounding chords. Get a load of this.
this sound. Alright, so that's a wrap. I'm going to have a lot of fun experimenting around with this prime time fret spacing.